a look at this next earn value exercise. As previously, we have a network diagram provides us with information about the critical path, but the thing that we're most interested in here is the time phase budget, because this gives our project baseline and therefore allows us to compare how we're doing at different times as our project is work is actually being done with the actual baseline. A couple things to point out here. We have the total plan value for each activity. This total plan value is used when calculating earned value. Okay, so this shows us the total amount we're planning to spend or the total value we're planning to get from these different activities. We also have plan value over here, but this is plan value at a particular point in time. If you understand the difference between when to use the plan value, the total plan value for calculating the earned value, and that for all the other times in these calculations where you see PV, you're going to be using the PV at this particular point in time, we'll show you how to do that in a bit, then you should be golden as far as earned value calculations, even if you don't fully understand what's going on yet. These calculations are something I feel that you have to just do it a bunch until it kind of clicks in. So let's look here. We have two status reports. We have one at the end of period four, and we have the one at the end of period eight. We have our percent complete, so our estimators have gone out and gotten that information. And we also have the actual costs. Our actual costs come from our friendly little accountants who look something like this. If you haven't seen what an accountant looks like, they're very happy, nice people. And they tell us, Scott, here's what you have spent on your various tasks. Here's how many nails you ordered or used. Here's how much labor was applied so forth and so on. We now then have to calculate or look up the earned value and plan value. From there we can then calculate things such as the cost variance and schedule variance. So let's use the time phase budget up here to actually go ahead and finish out the status report. Now I said that we use the total plan value when we're calculating out earned value. So I'm just going to go ahead and write these values down here. So 9,000. Uh, we, we also have 22,000. I look back up here. 30,000. And 20,000. Then I simply multiply these by the percent complete to get their earned value. So when I do that, 9,000 times 100% is around about 9,000. 22,000 times 100% is 22,000. 30,000 times 50% is right around $15,000. And 20,000 times 55% is around $11,000. Now for the plan value, I'm actually going to go look that up in my time phase budget. So what I'm going to do here is I notice it's at the end of period four. And so I want to look at the end of period four here. And I want to look what should have happened by now. So I sometimes say that you should act like you're Mary Poppins. You kind of jump into the graph here, and you draw this line, and you look backward. So for A, we were expecting $3,000 plus $6,000 worth of work to have occurred by now. So that's around about $9,000. For B, it looks like $10,000 plus $2,000 should be uh, around 12,000. And then when we look at C, we see that 
9,000 plus 6,000 should be about 15,000. And then finally, looking at D, if we were to jump into the graph there and see that the uh, for D we're expecting 8 plus 2, so that is 10,000. Now making these calculations, I'm going to do EV minus AC. Notice the C's there for to get the cost variance. So EV minus AC. Well, now I'm $500 on the plus side. That's good. So I'm actually looking good as far as budget there. The next one, 22,000 minus 23,000. Ooh, that doesn't look as good. That's a negative 1,000. And then 15,000 minus 15,000. Well, that's right on the money, so to speak. And then I have 11,000 minus 10,000. And so that's going to leave me with a positive $1,000. If I total that all up, it looks like I'm actually ahead or under budget by $500. Looking at the scheduling variance, I'm going to compare the earned value with the planned value. So in this particular case, the earned value minus the planned value, 9,000 minus 9,000 is 0. 22,000 minus 12,000 is 10,000. 15,000 minus 15,000 is 0, and 11,000 minus 10,000 is 1,000. So if I total that up, it's $11,000 is our scheduling variance. Now I just want to point out that this is using money to measure time, so there are some problems with this, and we will see that in fact the scheduling variance, as more and more things are done, this will actually go towards 0 whether we're ahead or whether we're behind schedule. Cost variance is a more accurate measure because we're using time to measure time. Very good. So we can sum up uh, those values here. Uh, so we could sum those up and we could uh, have, let me see, what would this be? 57,000. This would be about 56. Um, 500, and this would be about 46,000. Uh, we'll want these summed values later because we're going to calculate for these different time periods the SPI and CPI, as well as the percent complete. So now let's go ahead and do ending period 8. If you want to, you can go ahead and pause this video right now and do it yourself, or you can follow along with me. So I'm going to go ahead and once once again put in my values here. They will not have changed because I'm looking at total plan value for these. Then I'm going to look up at E and F, 16 and 18. So if I calculate these out, most of these will be pretty easy to calculate. And let me see, 18 times 80, so that's going to be 14,400. Okay. Plan value, once again, I'm going to have to act like I'm Mary Poppins here. I'm going to have to jump into the time phase budget, but this time I'm doing at period 8. Okay, so I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to look backward. And I'm going to see that I was planning to have spent 9000 on A. I was planning to have spent 22000 on B. I was planning to have spent 30000 
on C. I was planning to have spent 20000 on D. I was planning to have spent just 4 on E and then 18 on F. Okay, so I'll plug those numbers in here as well. Now I can do my calculations. Once again, EV minus AC is going to give me my cost variance. These ones that uh, were completed at 100% uh, previously are not going to change. Just doing the math here. So my cumulative for my project at this period of time is a negative $2,600. So indicating that we're that much over budget or overspent. When I look at my scheduling variance, notice that all of these that are 100% complete, whether they were completed on time or they were completed late, go to zero. So once again, that's just a consequence of using money to try and measure time. Okay, if I sum up these values here, eight thousand, and then one o three zero zero zero. So um, currently, Um, oh, and I should put, I'm sorry, these are negatives over here. Um, so these values here are both negative. So we're not doing so well as terms of cost, nor are we doing so well in terms of schedule. Okay, so we were planning to have $4,000 worth of work done, but it looks like we got zero. We were planning to have $18,000 worth of work done. Looks like we got fourteen four. Okay, so these negative values um, are not good for our project. So let's look at the SPI and the CPI as well as the percent complete. Well, there's a couple things we need for that in order to do the percent complete, I know that we're going to have to come back up here and we're going to have to get the BAC. But the BAC is simply the total planned value for a project. And that actually is shown here as $125,000. Okay, so otherwise I should have everything I need. So uh, the uh, SPI is the earned value divided by the planned value. The CPI is the earned value divided by the actual costs. Once again, see those C's there. And the percent complete is the earned value divided by the BAC. We'll also look and see if we can calculate EAC or estimated at completion. So given how things are going right now, where do we think we're going to end up? Okay, so for period four, this should be 57,000. 
divided by 46,000, which should give us uh, an SPI of 1.24, indicating we were doing pretty well as far as schedule at that po point in time. For the CPI, we're going to have that 57, then this time we're going to be div divided by 56.5. So that gives us a CPI of 1.01. .01. So meaning it looks like we're just about on budget at the time. Now, if we want to look at the percent complete, well, that's once again going to be the earned value divided by that BAC number that I just mentioned. And that's going to give us a percent complete then of about 45, 45.6 percent. So let's look at the end of period eight. We're now going to have 95.4 divided by 103, 0.93. CPI, we're now going to have the earned value, which is at 95.4, but this time it's going to be divided by our actual costs of 98. Okay, so in this case we've got a 0 0.97. That's actually pretty good. It means for every dollar we spend, we're getting 97 cents worth of value. And also look at the fact that if we take 95.4 and we divide it by uh, 125, we find that we are in fact about 76.3% 76, 76 complete. So we're doing pretty well in terms of our budget, given that we're closing in on the project being done. Now let's come back to this idea of can we actually calculate out the EAC? So what are we actually going to be at when we're done? Well, it's relatively simple. All we have to do is figure out how much of a remaining work do we have? How much is that going to cost? What is going to be the cost of remaining work? And we just add that to what the costs are so far, also known as a C. So that's pretty easy to do. All we have to do is look at the remaining work and divide it by our cost performance indicator. So the BAC is the total work we need to do. The EV represents the work we've got done. And we simply divide that then by the CPI 0.97, that will give us the estimate to complete, sometimes known as E, whoops, my pen starts freaking out there, the ETC, okay, and we just add that to the AC then. Okay, so it's going to be very close to uh, what our budget at completion is. It's going to be a little bit over. Okay, so go ahead and do that calculation. You're going to see something greater than $125,000 or $125,000. So hopefully that helps. And there's a couple other exercises that I'll do for you as well. And you can follow along with those until this all makes perfect sense. <laughs>